Hi, I'm Gail Monahan. Um, I teach cooking in Manhattan. I write about food for the Wall Street Journal, and I also write cookbooks. Um, today, I'm going to tell you a little bit about my one of my cookbooks, this one, which is called Lost Desserts. I guess it's my favorite because I'm such a dessert fanatic. Lost Desserts was inspired by a coffee crunch cake. Um, a friend of mine, Laura Zerubin, was the food and wine editor of House and Garden magazine a number of years ago, the now defunct food and wine magazine, and she was having a birthday party and somebody suggested I bring the cake and I really didn't know what cake to bring and a daughter, one of my daughters suggested that I bring a coffee crunch cake, which is something I used to make for them when they were children that derived from a fabulous cake that Blum's served in the 40s, 50s, 60s. Um, both in its Los Angeles tea room and in, in San Francisco, where it originated. And this dessert was kind of a conglomeration of genoise, coffee-flavored genoise with coffee-flavored whipped cream and lots of kind of a crunchy thing, almost like that candy honeycomb on the top. And it was divine, and I thought, oh yeah, this would be a really great and unusual cake to make for Laura. So I brought it to the party and everyone adored it, and even better than everyone adoring it, it started a conversation about desserts, sort of a nostalgia for desserts that people remembered from the past and from their childhoods. And out of this discussion, Laura decided that I should do a Lost Desserts article for House and Garden. Um, so I did this article maybe using, oh, I think it was five or six desserts from my childhood that I remembered from restaurants that were now closed. Um, and the article is fabulous, I mean, not because of me, as much as because House and Garden paid over $40,000 for a photographer. So it was really gorgeous. And I got a book contract out of it, a Lost Desserts book contract, at which point I had to expand the recipes to certainly include more than Los Angeles recipes of my childhood. So I did that over time. But that was the um, raison d'etre of the book. One in particular that seemed like it would be one of the easiest was in fact the hardest. Um, and this dessert was called Fané, and it was a dessert that came from Vaux le a famous chateau, actually the chateau that Versailles was modeled on, a chateau just outside of Paris. And I'm lucky enough, a, fr a close friend of mine's cousin, Christina de Vauquet, owns the chateau along with her husband Patrice, the Count and Countess de Vauquet. And at some point, because I was with my friend, who was her cousin, we got to go stay there for the weekend. And it was marvelous to be in that setting and walk around those gardens, but equally marvelous was the amazing food that Luzia, Christina's cook, made. And of all these fabulous dishes, I think the very best was a dessert she made called Fané, which was a wonderful ice cream concoction, sort of ice cream folded together with meringue and praline and unmolded and topped with more with whipped cream and more meringue and crunchy meringue and chocolate shavings and chocolate sauce. It was fabulous. And I asked Christina if she would be willing to have me use this in her in my book. And she said she would. And she was very generous and gave me the recipe. And I took all kinds of notes. So this was great. And then when it was time to, you know, really, the book was about to go to press, maybe two years later, I thought, well, I better just write Christina and check and make sure that I had the facts right and it was still okay with her that I used the dessert. And she said, well, yeah, I guess it would be okay, but I don't have any recollection of the special cake. And she sent me a couple of other dessert recipes she had, um, which were completely different. I mean, it didn't help. And she asked me to send her my recipe, which I did. And her, Luzia, same cook, made it for Patrice, and they adored it. And she said, yeah, well, go ahead, you know, tell the story, put it in the book, which I did. And I think it's probably one of the most popular recipes in the book. And then, kind of to its credit, to the credit of the recipe, several months later, when Christina came out with a Vaux de Vicomte dessert book, she used the recipe and gave the same story. So it was, it kind of came full circle. So many of them are so delicious, but I think my very favorite is baked Alaska, um, which was, I mean, the raisin d'etre of baked Alaska, I mean, ice cream is my very favorite food. And the raisin d'etre of baked Alaska is the combination of a hot kind of crispy, crunchy outside and a soft, but frozen inside. And they do this by sort of unmolding a ball of ice cream and encasing and insulating it with cake on the bottom and soft meringue on the top. So soft meringue and all these fluffy peaks and then you stuff it in a hot oven and the meringue gets beautiful and golden like a toasted marshmallow and when you cut into it the ice cream is still frozen because it's sort of a miracle. Because of this insulation the ice cream is still frozen and it is absolutely delicious. And I remember it, my mother used to make it when I was a child using lemon custard ice cream. 
Um, the traditional baked Alaska is vanilla ice cream, although in my mind that's a little boring. However, apparently 80% of Americans, vanilla is their favorite flavor, so who am I to say? But anyway, I like it best. I like to drizzle rum, dark rum on the cake, and then use coffee ice cream. But I think far and away that's my favorite recipe in the book. I um, made it on ABC's The Chew. I make it a lot, teach it in my cooking classes. Um, there, there are many close seconds, but this is pretty good. Well, I think what I learned researching and writing the book was how fabulous some of these, old, most of these old-fashioned recipes are. When you go to a restaurant now, a sort of high-end restaurant, I mean, I love those desserts also, but they're usually plated and precious and perfect and often, you know, include exotic ingredients, you know, strange kinds of chocolate flavored with rosemary or tea or you know, things that are much more exotic. Whereas the old-fashioned, sort of old-fashioned dessert trolley desserts really, you know, were basic. It was sugar and cream and butter and chocolate and eggs and lemon. And they, there was a generosity, there was an inclusiveness about these big desserts where, you know, you cut the big dessert and everyone has a piece. So I guess that's it, that, you know, to take advantage of that and sit around and eat an old-fashioned meal and try to cook it at home. Um, and everybody will be happy, you know, your guests will be pleased.